it was kind of like like a split down the middle. Um, when I announced that I was pregnant, um, a lot of people were excited because it was a time where a lot of us were pregnant and getting, you know, married and having kids and, and stuff. Um, so then when I said, well, I'm not going to parent, I'm going to place, then it was, oh, it was that uncomfortable, oh, okay, um, the friends who were supportive, they were supportive from day one clear through uh, post-placement. Um, I was actively involved with a, Bible, a women's Bible study at the time that I had been involved with for probably four or five years. Um, so in this, and the leaders that were the Bible study leaders, I had grown up with in church. Um, they were only about a year older than I am. They had struggled with some of the same struggles that I had went through. And so they were there for me. They were there holding my hands. They were there for me to cry a shoulder on um, when I, you know, didn't know if I could follow through with with doing the placement. Um, but then they also made me laugh. They they made me, um, you know, they they just made the the support real. And um, after placement, that same Bible study, they threw a a, a a baby shower for me, but it wasn't a baby shower, it was a Pamper Amy party. And so at that time what they did was they brought gifts just as if we were going to a baby shower, but it was gifts for me. It was gifts like fuzzy socks and um, my favorite scent of lotion. It was a book that they felt might be um, a good one for, for me to read. Um, it was just different things. Um, another friend made a photo frame for me, and each person who was there at the Pamper Amy party had written a one-word adjective to describe me. Um, and now to this day, I still have that frame with the adjectives, and inside that frame is, is a photo collage of myself and my daughter. Um, so it just, it, I, I had the extreme supportive friends. Now on the flip side, I had some of the friends who were not supportive, um, especially after placement. Some of the friends who I thought would be supportive of me ended up not being supportive. I would send out, you know, pictures and updates when I got updates of, of Kaylee and pictures, and um, one of those friends emailed me back and said, when you're ready to talk about this yourself, please email me. If, if you only are going to talk about the a child of, of, of who you place, I don't want to know. And it was hurtful for me, but it was a realization that, you know, not everybody agreed with, with what I went through. And that's okay. That's their own choice, and it was my own choice to, to do what I wanted. And so I pretty much stepped away from that friend um, for many, many years. I didn't contact her um, and stuff. And so a couple years ago, thanks to the, you know, creation of Facebook, she did find me on Facebook, and she sent me a friend invite, and so I went ahead and accepted the invite. Now, am I super close with her? No. She's more of an a acquaintance than anything. Um, she plays a lot of the same board games that I do, so, you know, it is kind of fun to kind of talk about that, but and when I do post updates about my daughter, which is not very often, you know, she's one who is not one to comment or hit the like button. Um, other people who are not supportive, then they're just not supportive. I did lose friends be because of of my choices, but to, to each their own. You know, I don't judge them for that. I just know that when you go through a difficult time, regardless if it's a pregnancy or even a divorce or, you know, family relations that are difficult, you really know who your true friends are. You know who the friends that you can call and bawl your eyes out to over the phone because you're bored and you're sad and you realize that you're missing the first dance recital or you're missing the first Christmas or the 16th Christmas, you know, of that you're not being able to, to be there for. So I know that I have a strong support system within my family and also within a few of my selected friends. I also think that that is why it is important to know other birth moms so that you can, um, you know, use the, the, that support system as well 
um, because they understand. They literally understand. You can talk to every counselor in the book, but they're not going to understand unless they're a birth mom themselves. They can read every, ever, you know, every grieving type of loss book, but it's, it's a different. Adoption grief is extremely different. It is more different than losing a, a loved one to death or a miscarriage. Um, I think that people just realize, you know, think that you can just, you know, just move on. And, and you can't. I mean, every birth mom realizes that you just, you can't move on. You are always going to have that, that, that piece of you that you do want to somewhat talk about. So now, you know, 11 years later, 11 and a half years later, I am kind of careful about who I do, you know, let people, who I do come out to about my, my, my adoption um, story when I first meet people because I, my husband and I have moved around and I don't live in the same area anymore. You know, when they ask if I have kids, a lot of times at first I say no until I really get to know them, until I can trust them, until I can really see if they're going to be able to handle knowing, you know, of some of the um, choices that, that I made in the past. So, you know, I think that's an important thing to look for when you are starting to become new friends with people, to really see and, and think to myself, is this person going to judge me based on their own issues? Are they going to judge me and not want to talk to me again?